Hi, I'm Jeff Povey. I'm the author of Shift and it's been published on the 24th of April. Right, we've got seven teenagers and they're in detention for various reasons. They're not all friends, but they all kind of know each other. They're in each other's orbits. There's a fire alarm. There's a, there's a bit of a panic and everything goes silent. Our teenagers are thinking, well, what's going on? Our guy, the ape, thinks, well, I'm out of here and just strides out. And one by one, they all leave. So we stay with Rev and Billy. And Rev, our narrator, is in town and she's with Billy. And they start to realise that every shop, every shop is shut. Well, not shut, it's just empty, basically. In fact, the whole world is empty. Everything has disappeared. So the shift is really about what do you do when you come out of school detention and no one is left apart from you. And after that, as you gradually look for more and more people, you come across the worst thing you could ever meet. And that's a version of yourself that is super powered, that is violent, aggressive, and possibly wants to kill you. I was 12, playing on my bike with my mates, and I was cycling around outside my house. There was a little cul-de-sac near where I lived, so I cycled off down to that cul-de-sac, took about 20 seconds, turned around, came back, and there was no one there. All my friends had gone. And I was thinking, that's kind of weird. Clearly they were playing some sort of trick on me. But for a few seconds I thought, I don't really like this, I really don't like this. So I thought, hang on a minute, if I cycle back the way I came, which I did, came back, cul-de-sac came out of the cul-de-sac, came around, and my friends were exactly where they were when I'd left them the first time. So in a strange way, this idea has been in my head for like, well, I was, I was 12, so it's probably 20 years ago, maybe, maybe a few more. But um, I just had this feeling that, I, got, I remember just having this cold, cold feeling, thinking, where the hell has everyone gone, basically? And then I had another cold feeling later that night, thinking, why didn't I stay in the other world? Because you never know what happened. So that was kind of the inspiration. And I know it sounds like a, a crazy little story, and it's cl clearly easy to explain, but for a few seconds of my life, I thought it was in another dimension. I'm pretty instinctive as a writer. Um, I don't necessarily plot things out, because if you plot things out, then you don't have any surprises. And if I don't surprise myself, I don't think I'm gonna surprise a reader or a viewer. I live in a world of television, and in my television, 90% of it is cliffhangers. So that basically you tune in, you get to the cliffhanger, you go, oh my God, what's gonna happen next? I must tune in again to find out. And that's sort of my approach to, to Ryan Shift. At the end of every sh chapter, you'd be thinking, oh God, no, I can't go to sleep. I'm gonna have to read the next chapter now because it's on a cliffhanger, it's on a knife edge. So I think my experience as a script writer, that's, that's what I bring to it. But the biggest thing, the biggest thing about Shift, for me anyway, and for any sort of writing is, if you don't have good characters, it really doesn't matter what happens to them. So my biggest thing is try and create these characters that you want to read, that you want to love, that you want to be with, maybe you want to hate them as well. But as long as you have that, that key element, and this is, this is in TV and film as well, as long as you have that, then you can, you can do anything with them. You, you take the readers with you through the characters, so that's, that's, that's probably my biggest thing from, from my experience is, you know, someone could be hanging off the edge of a cliff, but if you don't care about them, you just think, well, fall then. So we don't want that happening in, in Shift, basically. Well, Rev, Rev is the narrator of the story. She's, she's a girl whose dad disappeared uh, 12 years ago. Her mum's never found anybody else. So she's kind of been uh, in, in, in a world where Maybe she makes up her own rules, but she's a, she's, a, she's a nice girl. She's not the most confident person. She doesn't realise how, how pretty she really is. Um, and I think during this story, you actually, she actually learns that she's quite resilient and brave, and she somehow keeps going. And Johnson is this guy who he's, he's, he's smokes, he's on a motorcycle, he wears jeans and pointed boots to school. He's the guy who... He's just really cool, but he's not trying to be cool. He's the sort of guy that you'd, you'd have myths and legends about. People just keep going, there's Johnson, there's Johnson. Oh yeah, I remember when he did that? And they're probably not true. 
he's kind of kind of quite a quiet guy really he doesn't need to say a lot but in that he's he's someone with a again with quite a lot of resilience quite a lot of um, sort of chutzpah I suppose where he, he can he can also sort of find himself working at, working with the others to try and find an answer to what this awful thing has happened to them um, the ape is um, for me the, obviously the heart of the whole entire books uh, the three books um, I wanted to create a hero or an anti-hero that was big and sort of hairy and a little bit stupid and a little bit like I'll just do this and that's what I'll do <laughs> I've got three daughters and one son and there is no way our male perspective gets seen or heard or listened to so basically <laughs> I can only do things from a female point of view because that's the way we, we've grown up in our, our house. But joking aside, I think Rev was the best character to do it through because I think Johnson's probably a little bit too cool to, to really get underneath his skin. He's quite, he's quite a guarded person perhaps. I think if you did Gigi, it'd be kind of like wild and crazy. If you did the ape, it'd be got up, went to school, hit someone, came home again. And that'd be the end of his story. Um, if it was, and I also, I also think the moth being in a wheelchair, action-wise, he, he wouldn't be able to narrate all of the action. So, it, so I did put a bit of thought into it, but the main thing was I'm surrounded by girls, and I kind of, kind of felt that this was a girl's story, really. I don't know why. That's the, that's the way, the way that happened. The duplicates in this book are sort of extensions of of our original characters. So, my superpower would clearly be. I'd be super handsome, something like that. I don't know. Or, or I'd be invulnerable because in, in my job I get a lot of, you know, notes and criticisms from editors and agents and all that. So I'd be invulnerable. That'd be that'd be the main thing. I could take anything.